when this cycle, when people realize how bad we are financially, socially, and politically, and what's happening around the world with the BRICS and other places, the dollar's continuing losing its prestige will accelerate. And that last resistance of how some of the traders, particularly here in the Crimex, the Comex, still use that strategy will dissipate and disappear. And that's what's going to all co- coincide with gold getting above 2100. So it's above every little top that everybody looks at. And once it's in that new world, so to speak, the momentum players and all the other things that happen when things are trading at levels they never traded it before will drive a a very fast move. In 2023, gold emerged as one of the top performing assets, surpassing the performance of emerging market stocks, US bonds, the US dollar, global treasuries, and commodities, according to the World Gold Council analysis. The only asset classes outperforming gold were U.S. stocks and developed market foreign stocks. As of today, Peter Grandick notes that gold continues to outperform the stock market by a margin of a few percentage points. Despite starting in the 1600s, the price of gold has risen above $2,000 and is holding firm, signaling a bullish trend anticipated for 2024. Amidst a week marked by diverse economic indicators and geopolitical events, spot gold prices demonstrated resilience, concluding at $2,048.90, reflecting a modest increase of 0.17%, maintaining a consistent position above $2,025 per ounce and reaching a peak near $2,060, gold underscored its dual role as an inflation hedge, particularly following the Consumer Price Index CPI report and as a haven amid escalating tensions in the Middle East. The CPI data revealed a slight uptick in consumer inflation, mitigating expectations for immediate Federal Reserve rate cuts. Initially, the report boosted gold prices as investors saw it as an inflation hedge. However, the Producer Price Index, PPI, showed a decline in wholesale prices, hinting at easing inflation and increasing chances of future rate cuts. Despite the common belief that gold falls with rising interest rates, Peter doesn't expect many rate cuts. He cites the real inflation rate known by the Federal Reserve, calculated using methods from 1980 and 1990. Peter sees the debt crisis, once considered distant, now at the forefront. Accumulating more debt in four years than in over 200 years is alarming. Peter predicts gold overcoming resistance tied to the dollar's performance, with awareness of financial challenges growing. Gold is expected to surpass $2,100 as the dollar loses prestige, propelling a noteworthy silver run, possibly leading for a significant portion of the rally. We will present clips from Peter Grandich's interview with Liberty and Finance. But before we do, if you want more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more updates. Thank you and enjoy the video. Two years ago, when we were ending 2021, I made a major decision for myself and anybody who wanted to listen. I said that uh, we were entering the worst ever economic, social and political ever, which has gotten a lot worse. And we can talk about that in a little bit. So I didn't want to own any general equities that weren't related to natural resources. And instead, I actually suggested to people to own physical gold. Uh, I don't sell it. That's your business. I don't have any relationship with you. I don't get any pay by anybody other or anything like that. But I said that physical bullion was a, a worthy, better choice than equities, which was kind of unusual for people to hear. Two years later, I want you to know gold is still outperforming the stock market over that period. We were in the 1600s and interest rates were substantially lower than they are now. Goals nicely over 2000, remains above 2000, which is a bullish thing for 2024. And yet interest rates went up three, four hundred percent. So that argument of when rates go up, gold always goes down has been proven wrong more than once. Now, I'm not in the camp that thinks there's going to be a lot of interest rate cuts. They may have stopped, at least for now or for the cycle, raising substantially. But I don't believe there's going to be a lot of interest rate cuts because the real inflation rate and the Fed knows what the real inflation rate is because all they have to go back to is use how they used to calculate it in 1980 and 1990 before they changed it and massaged it so it would always come out lower than it really is. They know what the real, real number is. And quite frankly, I don't think they can get away with 
flooding the market anymore because here's why. And this is the other bullish factor for gold. The debt crisis has finally become what people have talked about for years, off in the distance, out there someday. Maybe we should worry about it for our children or our grandchildren is now front and center. We went up more in our debt in four years than we did the first 200 and something years. We went up two trillion dollars in a year. It. I'm coming in my 40th year, Elijah. When I started, we didn't even have a trillion dollars in long-term debt, period. Now we have multi-trillion dollar budget deficits. And Congress still has not passed a legitimate budget. They keep doing it through resolutions. They're not, they, they can't even get together. And that's because neither side is willing to give on anything. So they do just enough, they, they, they spend more, and uh, they push the can down. And people are starting to realize that that can is coming awfully heavy, Elijah. In fact, I think some of them are starting to kick it and their feet are going to hurt. And uh, that's another concern what people have. And that ties into the last negative, if you, I don't want to say negative, let's say resistance for gold, and that's the U.S. dollar and its performance. Because rates bumped up a little again, it, it rallied a little, and we were a little soft a couple of weeks on gold and all. Once it's in that new world, so to speak, the momentum players and all the other things that happen when things are trading at levels they never traded it before will drive a, a very fast move and finally give silver a reason to have its own day in the sun because it always still needs gold to break out first before silver can then follow up. And then at times during that largest part of the run, maybe even lead for a little while. Bloomberg reported that global central banks have been buying the most gold since the United States abandoned the gold standard in 1971, with 2019 figures dipping modestly from 2018's 50-year record. After a downtick in central bank gold purchases in 2020, the pace rose again in 2021, surpassing the 50-year record in 2022 and 2023. Peter believes that central bank buying, influenced by the World Gold Council, is the main driver of gold's performance, emphasizing the significance of ongoing developments in BRICS nations. In Peter's view, Russia and China, key players in this group, strategically acquire gold, envisioning a scenario where gold competes with or replaces the US dollar. Moreover, US inflation ticked more than expected in December, rising 0.3 percentage points to 3.4%. This indicates the Fed won't cut interest rates anytime soon. Unfortunately for all the investors, economists and consumers craving a soft landing for the economy, Peter anticipates that the Fed won't cut interest rates soon. Contrary to expectations, he predicts a measured approach, possibly delaying rate cuts until 2025 depending on economic conditions, disappointing investors, economists and consumers. Let's get back to the interview. The continuing thing is main driver is central bank buy-in and part of that is because of what is happening which still most on wall street pay no heed to and are going to pay a terrible price because of it to understand what the formation of the brick nations is leading to you know it was an afterthought then it was just five okay now it's 10 maybe be 20 and i hear people scoff and say ah oh, it's these countries and nobody cares about them and so forth and so on how wrong that is and yet Two of the biggest parties within that group, Russia and, and China in particular, have been huge buyers of gold. And they're not buying it for trade. They're not buying it for speculation. They're buying it because someday, somehow, in some form, gold will be used in, as part of their medium on how they're going to do business with one another. It may just be something regional, just among themselves, or maybe someday it will compete with or replace the U.S. dollar. That isn't any day soon, but that's what we're working to. And as we work through this, uh, they continue to be aggressive buyers. So I think central bank buying and related to BRICS is the number one bullish thing for gold. The second thing is, and I and I think it's interesting, and, and maybe you don't like seeing that, but I think it's an, it will be important to you, is that people are willing to go into Costco and Walmarts and buy gold. And to think about that, uh, even though it's not large sums of money, uh, and basically they're almost using it as a loss leader because they're not, you know, trying to profit from it. They're really just trying to found a way to attract people in the business. The very fact that Americans now are willing to buy physical, understand this, 
the culture in Asia, it's a sec, it's it's a way of life of owning gold. Americans have no understanding unless you know they they go back 60 70 years when we had the gold standard and all so it was kind of interesting to see that there'd be such demand for that from retail people who basically aren't following the markets like you and i do i that's a plus but again the, the overriding factor is is the continuing purchasing of physical bullion by central banks and there doesn't seem to be any near-term reason to think that's going to change well, the CPI and the PPI had a, a fairly significant difference, and we'll have to see as things shake out and, and, and we get another month where that stands. What I, what I just simply say is this. I think the Fed has one little reason to be a little bit more looser than possible, meaning they, if they were going to raise rates, kind of hold off if they can, because they don't want to do that during a presidential election. Now, my personal opinion was, and that's what gave the push in December for the stock market was the way the chairman worded his viewing, uh, his comment was bullish for stocks. But I think there was political pressure because the Biden economics argument was losing steam and the way what he did and allowed the stock market to rally. And then the media reports that must mean jobs are good and the economy's good. I think the Fed will always try to balance itself, not to look like it's politically motivated. And quite frankly, that's why I don't think there's going to be as many cuts as people think. I think they're going to just try to stay as steady as they can go and maybe even push out the rate cuts uh, into 2025 that many people thought were going to be in 2024, if I'm correct that the economy has the recession in 2024. I was never in the 2023 camp, but I've been in saying 2024, we'll see a recession. And we never know that until six months after the fact. So I'm not looking for the Fed to be as, as a big of a player on rates, both going cutting or raising as some others are. Gold is pushing above $2,030, buoyed by solid support at $2,015. Despite escalating geopolitical tensions, the US dollar isn't gaining traction. This indicates ongoing strength for gold, potentially leading to further gains amid continued uncertainties. Investors should closely watch these factors for potential impacts on future gold prices. What are your thoughts on the future price of gold and silver? Share your observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.